So originally I thought I was actually gonna do the composition and storytelling part together, but they ended up being so large that I had to do them separate. I have so much to say about both and they're both really, really important. Right, composition is the placement or arrangement of visual elements in a photo, a frame of a video, right? That's what composition is. Um, so just as you would arrange a symphony to work together in harmony, this is exactly how composition works uh, together in, in a harmony to make an image work and for it to be beautiful. Some Instagram accounts that I love to follow are the underscore ASC. Another one would be cinema.magic. Cinema Best, uh, and just any of those other ones that you can find on cinema. Even some of my favorite photographers uh, are, are people like Rodney Smith. He's amazing compositionally. Uh, and you can find so many other ones uh, out there that will be amazing to look at, to be able to follow along, to be able to see what they do. Also, if you want to watch movies and shows and pay attention to how they compose things and how they do things, if you aren't squeamish at all, one of my favorite movies to kind of look at, actually it's a TV series, it's called Hannibal, and it's a TV series on Amazon, but you could just Google Hannibal Cinematography and you'll see like it's amazing. You can Google Hannibal TV show cinematography and you'll see just like the cinematography is insane. It's just so good, right? And so composition is the glue that holds photographs and stories together. It's the strength that makes them timeless and stands the test of time. And that's what's so important about composition. Now, as we think through composition, there are two things that our eyes want. Our eyes want things to be in focus, where you can see this is not quite in focus here um, as this one, and they want things to be clean and uncluttered. Uh, they don't like clutter, so we have to compositionally compose to make sure we can get there, right? So here's an image here where uh, that top one, the background is a little bit cluttered. The background has a little bit that has some people. There's a window, but the bottom one is a lot cleaner, and so the eye is far more pleased with that bottom image. So now let's dive into it, and I want to show you guys my nine rules of composition. I know I should have done ten, but... I like to stick to nine and I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm not gonna just make up random ones. So number one is compose like Darth Vader. And what I mean is sit and wait for the shot and be patient for the shot to come into your frame. It's important, it, it actually works, right? And so um, what I will do is I will sit in one spot, wait for things to happen because hands come into frames, all kinds of stuff happens. I take six to 7,000 photos at a wedding, but they're all compositionally intentional. I'm not just spraying and praying, I'm compositionally making sure just like this uh, video here with the hands coming in and out until I find that one perfect shot. Number two, square it up. And what I mean by that is find a horizon line and stick to that line and square it up. Um, if you don't square it up, then shapes don't remain the same shape they're actually supposed to be and things get distorted. If you're too much on one side or the other, you'll get the horizontal tilt, but if you're too low or too high, you'll get a vertical tilt. So one thing I do is come down into the transform section in Lightroom and make sure I fix that up so that it's clean and it's exactly how I want it to be. Number three, keep it clean. It's our job to eliminate the things that don't matter and the things that do, uh, we wanna make sure that we keep them in. So the secret to composition is knowing what to leave out and knowing what to keep in. So as you can see in this video, I'm using the content aware tool and taking everything that could be distracting off of the ground on the walls and even in the parking garage because I want to make sure that anything that's distracting is left out. And now you can see, right, the before and the after and how clean it is. It's much better. It's much more visually pleasing uh, to the eye to see that cleanliness. Number four, no mutilation. And what I mean by that is horizon line. So as we can see, there's a horizon line that goes directly to, through her head and his head right there. So you can see that this one is far more visually pleasing and so is this one and this one. And then when you come back to this one, your eye just kind of breaks a little bit because there's a line that goes through the dress and then there's also the line that goes through their head. But these make the eye feel a lot more satisfied rather than one like this. They're all beautiful shots, but these are just far more visually pleasing than this one right here. And you don't want to cut off limbs, right? So look at the bottom here. You can see her hand. It looks like, like, where the heck is that hand coming from, right? Like, that's a random hand, whereas something like this is far more visually pleasing. We don't want limbs and joints. We want to make sure we don't cut those things off. Now, number five, we want to create depth and isolate your subject. 
You can do this by using the foreground and the background to give the whole nother dimension to your work. And one thing that I like to say is if you can stab it with a knife, then it can be a layer. So you see through all these, these are layers uh, that I uh, you can actually probably stab with a knife and it can actually be a layer. And one also thing that I like to do to isolate my subject is shallow depth of field. So this is a Brenizer technique, which I talk about in the course uh, as well but for here you can see that there is a very shallow depth of field that makes them pop even though there's such a grand landscape behind them number six fill the frame this is one of the biggest problems i see people make in photography they either have too much dead space uh, they don't zoom in right so something you can do is zoom in you can get closer where as you see this is back and then go in if you go in closer there's just a lot more intimate feeling to that and it just fills that frame up. So something like this is really nice, but this is far more intimate because I'm going in and I'm getting closer, right? So I'm filling that frame, I'm getting in there closer. You've gotta get closer, right? You gotta make sure you get in there and that gives that real intimate feeling of getting in there, getting that shot, filling the frame with the emotion. And if, what I would rather you do is if you can't get closer, then make sure that you're cropping, right? So like, that's the number three one is making sure you're cropping, getting in there, making sure you're cropping. Cause you can see here, I am actually taking this veil shot and I shot way back on her face and then I'm cropping that in to get what I really want. And so I'm making sure I'm cropping and filling that frame with the things that are essential and important to the style and the look that I wanna have. Now, number seven would be using natural lines. This will lead your eye to your subject and it's extremely powerful visual aid to draw your eye and to create depth as well. And it's so important to be able to have this. And now these lines often generally create what my next point symmetry and framing right instead of just splitting things into thirds we want to completely balance it all together and it gives it a really powerful view right when you're able to frame something and you're able to use symmetry to do it it allows for your eye to be visually pleased by what's going on and allows for you to create really powerful images the next one for me is patterns and repetition pattern repetition is really important if you could be able to create patterns and repetitions that draw your eye to your subject but also create emotion and create a lot of dominance in the images it makes it really really appealing to be able to have those things in there I hope that's helpful for you guys because it's really important to be able to think through these things as you're shooting compositionally. Now we'll dive into some other ones as we get into storytelling, but those are just nice bases to think about as you're shooting, composing well, sitting in one spot, all of those things are all super important. We'll dive into more of those in the next section, the storytelling section, but for those to think about compositionally, it's really, really important. So enjoy. If you have any other questions about any of that stuff, don't hesitate to let me know because I'm here for you.